But first of all, I have to say that how girls and women react to hormones, it is highly individual. Uh, and, and as it has been pointed out here, there is so little evidence to rely on. But we do know that naturally cycling women from puberty to menopause experience dramatic fluctuations of circulating sex hormones and that sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone have uh, direct access uh, to the brain and are involved and in that there are receptors in all the areas that we know are involved in, in uh, difficulties and challenges that we are seeing in, in individuals with ADHD. Uh, but there's also a growing number of studies suggesting that women with ADHD on a group level at least may be more sensitive to these fluctuations uh, across the cycle uh, compared to women without ADHD. And, and just to refresh the knowledge about the female cycle using a, a typical cycle of, of 28 days, we know that the first two weeks, day one to 14, uh, is the follicular phase where estrogen levels are rising, peaking around day 14, uh, triggering ovulation. And women with ADHD, again, on a group level, will say that they have better control, usually, of their uh, ADHD symptoms, just as Dr. Littman actually suggested uh, in the beginning of her talk. Um, and, and following then ovulation, uh, uh, typically then day 15 to 28 is the luteal phase and the pro uh, progesterone is the dominating hormone. And we know that during this period, even women without ADHD uh, often describe negative mood and, and also physical symptoms, we can call it PMS or PMDD. And, and women with ADHD often also report less control over their ADHD symptoms and si some may even, even experience that their ADHD medication may be less effective uh, during this uh, pre-menstrual uh, period then. And um, I, I assume, but maybe I shouldn't, that um, many clinicians are unaware of the impact of, of hormones on medication and that could complicate yeah. treatment. Yeah, yeah, and and also because because uh, it depends. Uh, you know, ADHD is not a homogeneous uh, disorder. Not not for women and and not for 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 men either. Um, so so the hormonal the effect on the reaction of the hormonal fluctuation can also be dependent on on the individual ADHD profile. So if you have a, an individual profile that is more defined by impulsivity and hyperactivity, then the days around ovulation where the estrogen levels are high can be the most disruptive for you because then these high estrogen levels can potentiate dopamine, can potentiate the ADHD medication if you're on a stimulant, uh, and then actually increase and result in risk-taking behaviors. So, so even though it may be for the, for the person or for the woman uh, associated with basically positive em emotions and energy, the, the result uh, can be uh, equally um, uh, devastating if this positive energy results in you wanting to go out partying, drinking alcohol, taking drugs, driving maybe too fast or under the influence, shopping a lot, or um, you know, ending up in difficult situation that you have to manage for the rest of your period because of these you know days where you are overstimulated. And again, then if your ADHD profile is more of a classic, like you, you say, ADD type defined by maybe difficulties in energy regulation, getting your energy up and, and maybe a lot of uh, depressive symptoms and anxiety, the higher estrogen around ovulation may come as a very welcome energy boost and, and a mood boost. Um, and instead you suffer tremendously from depressive symptoms and rejection sensitivity. And so around the weeks or days premenstrually. So it can look very, very differently. And also that uh, we, we don't know very much about treatment. And, and there are just a small, and to my knowledge, just one small study from the Netherlands, from Maxine de Jong and, and Sandra Koy's group that have actually explored cyclic or flexible dosing, namely that uh, increasing the dose uh, around the, the, the uh, premenstrual period. 
Um, so, so we don't know, but we suspect and we think, and the theoretical model is there. But again, so much uh, that we don't know, and we have very little, as clinicians, very little supporting guidelines to rely on. We really have to, to make individual assessments for every woman and discuss her hormonal profile. Yes. And there is some um, interesting new research that I know many of you are aware of. I believe it's um, Dr. Martel on the um, the impact of estrogen mm-hmm. and progesterone. Yes. Um, yeah. yes. Um, and and she's contributing um, an overview of her research to to the summer issue of Attitude. Um, so mm-hmm. um, I think that it, we're excited um, to be able to present uh, that we sort of visually so, yeah, to help people so understand. Excited. Yeah. yeah. So excited to to take part of Dr. Martel's research as well. Wonderful. Um, I do have a. Um, I'm I'm looking at the questions that we're receiving here today, and I would be remiss to not touch um, with you, Dr. Skoglund, on perimenopause and menopause. Again, mm-hmm. I understand the research is scant, but um, what can we tell people about? There are literally hundreds of people in the in the comments now asking why now. Why in my um, 40s and 50s um, am I finally getting this ADHD diagnosis? Why did things go go haywire for me? What do we What do we know? Well, so I think also um, continuing on what Dr. Littman was was discussing that we miss and we fail to identify the girls and the young women, and and we have uh, just published a study where we can show that that girls and women are are diagnosed four years later. So so uh, uh, girls uh, and women will be missed for a longer time. So that is one of the questions, and and it's not you know so um you know far uh, in our in our history where we actually didn't talk um, much about adult adhd and 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 even less about uh, adult females with adhd so so i think that is one uh explanation but then we also have this complex interaction with the hormones where we know that uh women with women just uh with and without adhd will be affected uh, cognitively and physically uh, when we go through uh, perimenopause, these years around um, um, uh, menopause. And the, the, the challenge here is to try to disentangle, is this something, is this cognitive um, symptoms that is actually most probably related to hormonal uh, changes during perimenopause? Or is this a um, person who have lived with undetected ADHD for her entire life, been able to mask, as Dr. Lichtman say, been able to cope, to find strategies, while, while the strategies is no longer holding up when this also this hormonal hit to the brain comes uh, in the perimenopause. We don't know very much about that, but we, we do have some studies showing that women without ADHD in perimenopause, yet improved cognitive functions from central stimulants from ADHD medication, and vice versa, that women with ADHD seem to respond really well to um, uh, menopausal hormonal treatment, uh, HRT or uh, MHT, and and that their ADHD symptoms seem to answer to that as well. So this is an extremely important uh, topic where we where we are just scratching the surface, but we have to use our common sense, I think, and we have to realize that ADHD is a childhood disorder. It's not a childhood disorder, but but it's it's uh, you are born with it or you develop it early on in life, and then it can be missed and diagnosed in adulthood. But if you have no symptoms of ADHD and then you get ADHD symptoms in your mid forties, then um, hormonal factors um, might be the best hypothesis to start with. Again, you have to be super individual. You have to have this collaborative um, discussion uh, with your clinician and and, uh, a very open, um, I guess, mind in this shared decision-making when you go forward. 